Good morning. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you, Sherry, for the nice introduction. So uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Northwest Avalanche Center's Trailhead Outreach Program. Uh, this was a new program that we launched last year um, that we're very excited about. Uh, so let's move along. So the way I'm kind of going to structure this presentation is I'm going to go over the goals of the, of the program, uh, the objectives. Then I'm going to go over how we kind of executed everything. And then I'm going to go over the results. So uh, the basics of Trailhead Outreach is we decided to go up to the mountains and conduct on the snow outreach. And with these four objectives in mind, uh, the two objectives, the one on the top of your screen and the one on the left, are pretty traditional outreach objectives. Um, the main one being connect with users that we wouldn't otherwise connect with, whether that be through uh, social media, through events like this, or uh, other ways that NWAC typically connects with backcountry users. Uh, and just being able to be on the snow at these backcountry trailheads uh, in front of people was great for capturing the, uh, the real population of backcountry travelers. The other thing that we wanted to do with these outreach events is really promote the resources that NWAC has to offer. Uh, and in doing so, raise avalanche awareness at these trailheads. Uh, obviously, the resources that NWAC has to offer are the forecast and avalanche awareness classes, among other things. Uh, but those are the two things that we really focused on uh, for this project. We also took advantage of this opportunity of being on the snow to collect a little bit of data. Uh, and we did that by counting uphill travelers by user group. We were able to stand at the trailheads um, and with clickers and say, OK, one snowshoe, two snowshoe, two ski. Uh, three split board, um, and kind of go through and get a, an accurate count of how many people were in the backcountry uh, on, on each specific day that we were out. Uh, and we also incorporated a survey component to this project. Uh, and the survey allowed us to really learn about who is in the backcountry and what their habits are in terms of uh, checking the forecast, what gear they're carrying, uh, and their general who they are. So where were we? We were out on 10 separate weekend days this past winter. Uh, that number is going to go up this year, which I'll tell you about in a second. Uh, we spent two days at Mount, at Mount Baker up at Heather Meadows. We spent four days at Alpenthal uh, two, and two days at Gold Creek and Commonwealth apiece. Now, from this map, you can tell that most of our ep efforts were concentrated in the Snoqualmie Pass area. And what we found in looking at the data is that uh, the data is very dependent on, on locations. And so this year, we're really going to be spreading out uh, as we launch this project to go out a second year and really going all up and down the Cascades, from Baker all the way down to Mount Hood, uh, potentially even into the Olympics uh, and onto the East Slopes as well. So the setup. Uh, this was a big challenge. This was the challenge. Uh, we, with On the Snow Outreach, it's really never um, been conducted at this, at, to this degree before. And so we had no idea how people were going to react to seeing a tent uh, at a backcountry trailhead. And so we had to make the tent as attractive as possible. We wanted to make people come talk to us. Uh, and we did that by offering free coffee and cliff bars to anyone that wanted to come our way. Uh, in addition to receiving coffee and cliff bars, everyone also had the opportunity to check out the NWAC avalanche and mountain weather forecast, uh, which we had available for everyone on the table. We also handed out some danger cards with the NWAC uh, website address on the front and the North American public avalanche danger scale on the back. Another big part of this was that in exchange for a survey, you were entered to win a drawing for MSR snowshoes, which we raffled off once a month. So uh, how did we interact with travelers? Traveler interaction was the biggest challenge for this project. Uh, as you can imagine, we interacted with a ton of different types of people. This was anyone from uh, the backcountry skier who's on his 200th day out this season to uh, one that stands out in my mind in particular is a, a young man probably just old enough to drive looking for snow lake in shorts. Um, to uh, someone who had never seen snow before. Uh, obviously, that's something that's a component of outreach that's extremely rewarding, is talking with these types of people. And so this flowchart really sums up our, uh, our efforts and our strategy and how we interacted with people. Um, this was constructed by Forrest McBrien. And really, the, the goal of this is to share with everyone NWAC's resources so that before they go into that country the next time, 
they may have an idea of where to find uh, the resources that can help them plan uh, their next um, excursion. And uh, so this really did, uh, this strategy really worked and we found that uh, we're able to not only uh, connect with people but also uh, this was a great way to lead into the survey. Uh, and it really, another aspect of this is that we wanted to communicate in multiple ways with everyone uh, that we interacted with, whether that be having a conversation with them and having them take our survey, having a conversation with them and letting them take one of our uh, danger cards, because the more ways that we could interact with people, the more likely they would be um, to log on to nwac.us before their next trip. Um, and check that forecast uh, and be interested in uh, getting the education. So uh, I'm going to dive into the data a little bit here. Um, I mentioned the uphill traffic counts. So over the final eight days, we counted uphill travelers between 10 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. Those are the hours that we were at the trailheads. Uh, and we saw a ton of travelers, obviously. Uh, we were in front of almost 1,700 people, and this doesn't even include the people that uh, left before 10 a.m. and came back to the trailhead. And so really we view this as a huge measure of success in that this project gets in front of the backcountry population uh, as a whole to share NWAC's resources. And obviously we did have some crazy days too. I find the 404 uphill travelers at Heather Meadows just mind-boggling. Uh, this was definitely a crazy day. Uh, and interacting with all these travelers yielded approximately 860 survey responses. So what did the survey consist of? What did we want to know with this? We wanted to know if they're familiar with the Avalanche Center. This was really kind of the meat of the survey because in looking at the data for this question and how users responded to the other questions, we were able to figure out, is our message working? Are, are people who are familiar with us getting the forecast more often? Are they more likely to have a beacon probe and shovel uh, when they're traveling in the backcountry? We also wanted to know their method of travel, if they're snowshoeing, skiing, uh, splitboarding, uh, or other uh, methods of travel. We wanted to know their group size, if they've taken avalanche courses. We want to know what safety gear they're carrying, if they know the forecast. Uh, we want to know a little bit about where they're going and also some general demographics. So this is the data set that we came up with uh, as a pie chart in terms of user group. So as I move through the rest of these statistics and plots, uh, it's, a, it's a good idea to keep in mind that uh, a little over half of all users surveyed were snowshoers. And a lot of the data that I have is broken down into user group, but some of it is not and is represented holistically. So uh, here's a couple rapid fire statistics. 67% of respondents were familiar with the Avalanche Center. Uh, we really had no idea what this number was going to be, uh, and so 67% was simply the number that we came up with. 23% uh, were traveling in groups of six or more. This statistic is, um, it may sound surprising to you, uh, just from observation. Uh, this is the presence of Avalanche courses, um, guided forest service snowshoe walks uh, in the backcountry. Uh, it's Extreme, the population is extremely high, and this is definitely a good statistic to consider um, moving forward. And then a final statistic on this slide is just that a little over half of respondents had some form of avalanche education. So, uh, more statistics. 68% knew what the avalanche danger was for the day. And you may think, oh, like 68% knew the danger and 67% were familiar with NWAC. Maybe that's, I, maybe that's a one-to-one -one correlation. Uh, it didn't turn out to be, but as I'll show later, it was definitely, there was definitely a correlation there, as you would expect. And then a quick statistic regarding safety gear. We see a large discontinuity between uh, user groups and those who carry beacon probe shovel with backcountry skiers and split borders being far more likely to have that, as we would expect. So here's a quick plot. Um, this is in regards to uh, different user groups and their habits with checking the forecast. So we had a question on the survey that just said, how often do you check the forecast before you head out? Do you never check it? Do you sometimes check it? Or do you always check it? And we see that skiers and split borders are trending heavily towards the always, which is definitely a good thing. But we do see that other user groups are more skewed toward the never side. 
Uh, and just so you know, the other user groups consist of people who are ice climbing, people who are towing sleds, not, not the motorized type, um, or just a user that doesn't identify as a snowshoer, a skier, a splitboarder, or a hiker. So, uh, so some key survey statistics uh, regarding those regarding age group and habits of checking the forecast. We see that we're reaching pretty a pretty similar number of people in that 19 to 60 age range, uh, and we didn't really gather a whole lot of data for the zero to 18 or the 60 plus age age range. Uh, but along those lines, NWAC is also launching just this year. Uh, an excellent youth ambassador program to engage the zero to 18 age group. Uh, and so that when we do get into that 19 to 30, that these numbers do go up. Notice the scale on the left. That's a little, the, even the top bars are just a little over 40% um, of travelers always checking the forecast before heading out. Some more statistics and then we'll move on. Uh, of those who are unsure if they'd be traveling, in avalanche terrain. 64% didn't know the avalanche danger. So in terms of what unsure means, unsure could mean uh, they're unsure how to recognize avalanche terrain or they need to evaluate conditions before they decide to enter that. And this year uh, we'll be collecting, a, using a new survey to determine, to break this down uh, to see really the roots of this statistic. And then another measure of success for this project is really this bottom statistic is that 78% of those familiar with NWAC against 46% not familiar with NWAC knew the correct avalanche danger for the day. So in the question that says, what's the rating for the day, 78% uh, of those familiar with NWAC responded correctly. So one more plot here. Uh, this is regarding avalanche education levels. And we also see that those familiar with the Avalanche Center uh, trend uh, trend toward more avalanche education, which is something that we would also expect. I want to thank the 23 dedicated volunteers that made this possible. Uh, this project was 100% volunteer run, and it really it took a village, uh, a lot of volunteer hours. And I also want to thank the NWAC nonprofit staff as well as board member Rick Mead for all their help in making this happen. So moving forward, this is the big question, and this is where we want you to be a part of this. As I mentioned, we're expanding this project this year. We have 15 plus events already on the calendar, including three snowmobile days, where the model is going to be a little different, where we're going to be walking around a parking lot rather than at a tent. But we want to engage snowmobilers, and we want to collect data uh, from this user group as well. Uh, and so if you're at all interested in volunteering for, with this project, uh, I encourage you, please come talk to me. I'll be at the NWAC table during the lunch break as well as during the beer session. I have a quick sign-up form, uh, and I'll be, I can be in contact with you regarding which, uh, which events you'd like to volunteer at. You don't need a high level of avalanche education. In fact, you don't need any at all. Uh, you just need a willingness to uh, stand in the cold for a day and, uh, and want to improve avalanche safety. So with that, I want to open it up for questions. Uh, feel free to contact me at either of these email addresses as well if you have more questions that weren't answered today. Thank you very much.